Are you a domestic importer of tobacco products with questions about FDA's regulations? Stay tuned for some answers and tips on this edition of FDA's Tobacco Compliance Webinars. Welcome to FDA's Tobacco Compliance Webinars, education and information for retailers and small businesses, sponsored by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the Center for Tobacco Products. I'm David Racine. Thanks for joining us today. We receive many questions from domestic importers of tobacco products about FDA's regulations. As we've done in the past, we'll be answering some of those questions today and give importers some additional tips on how to comply with the regulations. Joining me today is my colleague, Commander Christina Peters from CTP's Office of Compliance and Enforcement. You'll notice that some of the slides have links to relevant guidance documents, letters, and past webinars that can be found on FDA's website. We encourage you to review those materials in addition to today's webinar. Now, Let's get started. Commander Peters. Thanks, Captain Racine. The purpose of this webinar is to answer some questions we are frequently asked by importers of tobacco products and to provide some tips that we think may be helpful to importers. For importers who have not seen our 2016 imports webinar, we strongly encourage you to watch that webinar as well, although some of the deadlines for meeting certain requirements have changed since that video was made available. The topics we will be discussing today include an update on the dates to meet certain requirements, which have been revised, the automated commercial environment, also known as ACE, and which data elements are and are not required when importing a regulated tobacco product, establishment registration, importation of regulated tobacco products for personal use, prior notice for the importation of regulated tobacco products, product codes, tariff classification and HTS codes, and user fees. As we previously mentioned, some compliance dates provided in the 2016 imports webinar have changed. Compliance dates which were presented in the 2016 imports webinar and have since changed include the compliance dates for ingredient listing submissions for deemed products, the compliance dates for harmful and potentially harmful constituent or HPHC submissions for deemed products, the compliance dates for addictiveness warning statements on packaging and advertising for covered tobacco products other than cigars and those that do not contain nicotine. The compliance date for required label statements on deemed products in package form and the compliance date for submission of applications for pre-market review for deemed products on the market as of August 8, 2016. You can see the new compliance dates for these requirements across the next few slides. The Automated Commercial Environment, or ACE, is the primary system through which the trade community reports imports and exports and the government determines admissibility. ACE is maintained by Customs and Border Protection. When an FDA-regulated product is imported, CBP forwards the data to FDA. The FDA published a final rule, Submission of Food and Drug Administration Import Data in the Automated Commercial Environment, on November 29, 2016. This rule explains what information is required to be submitted by importers when entering an FDA-regulated product into the United States. If a product you import has been detained by FDA, please use the FDA's Office of Regulatory Affairs Headquarters Directory to identify the appropriate individuals to contact to help you understand why your product has been delayed or detained. For all FDA-regulated products, including tobacco products, importers are required to submit the FDA country of production, the complete FDA product code, the full intended use code, and a telephone number and email address for the importer of record. Additionally, when importing a regulated tobacco product, importers must submit the brand or commercial name of the article. 
brand name is not required for products solely intended for either further manufacturing or as investigational tobacco products. We want to focus on two types of optional data elements we frequently are asked about. The first is the FDA Establishment Identification Number, or FEI. This is a unique number issued by FDA to track inspections of the regulated establishment or facility. An FEI is not required to import tobacco products into the United States. However, FDA encourages importers who have an FEI to enter it into ACE. The second frequently asked about data element is called an affirmation of compliance. An affirmation of compliance is a data element which can be included in an ACE entry to indicate compliance with an FDA requirement. At this time, all affirmations of compliance are optional for tobacco products. However, we would like to encourage importers to use the affirmations of compliance when appropriate to expedite entry review of their shipments. Please also be aware that while the affirmation of compliance is optional, imported products are still required to meet the legal standards for importation. Another question we are frequently asked is whether importers must register their establishments and list their products with FDA. Section 905B of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, or FD&C Act, requires every person who owns or operates any establishment in the U.S. engaged in the manufacture, preparation, compounding, or processing of a regulated tobacco product to register with the FDA. And every registrant must file a list of its regulated tobacco products in accordance with Section 905I. Establishment registration and product listing requirements currently apply only to those persons who own or operate domestic establishments engaged in manufacturing tobacco products. An importer who does not own or operate such an establishment is not subject to the requirements of Section 905B or Section 905I of the FD&C Act. Foreign establishments are not required to register and list until FDA issues regulations establishing such requirements in accordance with Section 905H of the FD&C Act. Additional requirements, including, but not limited to ingredient reporting, health warnings, and pre-market authorization, apply equally to foreign and domestic manufacturers. Another question we frequently receive from importers is whether there are any exceptions to FDA regulations for the importation of tobacco products for personal use. The FD&C Act does not exempt tobacco products imported for personal use, from applicable requirements for tobacco product imports. Therefore, under Section 801 of the FD&C Act, imported tobacco products are subject to refusal of admission if, among other things, they are or appear to be adulterated or misbranded. CTP follows the FDA policy on coverage of personal importations in Chapter 9 of the RPM regarding personal use quantities of FDA-regulated imported products in baggage and mail. The Center for Tobacco Products also frequently receives questions regarding whether importers must submit prior notice of imported shipments of regulated tobacco products. The Public Health, Security, and Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act of 2002, the Bioterrorism Act, requires that FDA receive prior notification of food, including animal feed that is imported or offered for import into the United States. However, Prior notice is not required for the importation of regulated tobacco products. FDA frequently receives questions about how to determine the correct product code for an imported product. The FDA product code is seven characters long and is broken into the following fields. Industry. The first two characters of the FDA product code represent the various industries regulated by the FDA. The industry code is always numeric. The industry code for tobacco products is 98. Class, the third character of the FDA product code. This is always a letter. For tobacco products, class means the general type of product, such as smokeless tobacco or cigarettes. Subclass, the fourth character of the FDA product code. This is always a letter. For tobacco products, the subclass code is used to categorize the flavor of the product. Process indicator code. The fifth character of the FDA product code for tobacco products, this is always a letter. For tobacco products, the PIC code describes the intended use of the product. The intended use can be either for consumer use, for further manufacturing, or for investigational use. 
product, the final two characters of the FDA product code. For tobacco products, the product code helps further identify the specific product. The product code builder is an online tool which can assist in locating and building a product code. On this slide, you can see two examples of product codes. The term tariff classification is a system that enables uniform identification of imported and exported goods for purposes of duty and tax collection, enforcement of national laws and international treaties, analysis for economic and business planning, and international trade negotiations. FDA is frequently asked how the tariff classification, or HTS code, of a product affects whether a product is or is not a regulated tobacco product. Your tariff classification does not determine whether your product is a regulated tobacco product. The FD&C Act gives FDA authority to collect user fees from domestic manufacturers and importers of certain tobacco products. At this time, domestic manufacturers and importers of cigarettes, snuff, chewing tobacco, roll-your-own tobacco, cigars, and pipe tobacco are subject to user fees. More information about user fees may be found in the link in the slide. You must submit information required for FDA to calculate assessments and you must pay these user fees. Failure to pay a user fee renders your tobacco products adulterated under Section 9024 of the FD&C Act and subject to possible enforcement action. It is a prohibited act to introduce or deliver for introduction into interstate commerce any tobacco product that is adulterated. The guidance contains detailed information on what you must submit and how FDA uses this information to assess user fees. FDA will notify you of the amount of the quarterly assessment no later than 30 calendar days before the end of each quarter of the fiscal year with the following information. Amount of the assessment, due date, class assessment information, domestic manufacturer or importer assessment information, any adjustments made by FDA, how to pay the fees, interest information, and dispute contact information. That's all I have today. Thanks for listening. Captain Racine? Thanks, Commander Peters. We have some great resources for you on our website, and we encourage you to review those materials. Please also check our website often for updates and sign up for the Center's CTP News and CTP Connect email services. If you have any questions regarding the topics discussed in this webinar, please contact AskCTP at FDA.HHS.gov or 1-877-287-1373. In addition, the Office of Small Business Assistance provides technical and other non-financial assistance to support small tobacco businesses in complying with the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The Office of Small Business Assistance can be contacted by email at smallbiz.tobacco at fda.hhs.gov. And let me thank all of you for your participation in this webinar, brought to you by the Center for Tobacco Products, protecting our kids and the nation's health from tobacco. Mm -hmm.